In the module 8 assignment, you're going to be taking one more look at rock types. Here we're going to be looking at the third rock type, metamorphic rocks, and looking at their properties and using those to identify them. Uh, in some ways, metamorphic rocks are the easiest of all three uh, because there, there are fewer uh, sort of things to think about when it comes to their texture. Uh, metamorphic rocks are foliated or not foliated. Those are your options. Um, and there are just fewer common metamorphic rocks compared to igneous or sedimentary. And this is because metamorphic rocks require some extreme conditions to form, and they really only happen deep in the crust. You need high enough pressures and temperatures in order to change the minerals or to change the mineral properties and, and alignment in order to form metamorphic rocks. They don't form at the surface because igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks do form at the surface, they're more common than metamorphic. So by way of, uh, or to offer some motivation, again, we're gonna go to the Grand Canyon. We've seen this image before when talking about sedimentary rocks, uh, which is what the Grand Canyon is most famous for. Uh, but at the bottom of the canyon, down where the river is, there's a really fantastic suite of metamorphic rocks too. And so we're gonna zoom in on an area roughly here and take a closer look. So down at the bottom of the canyon, uh, there is this rock type here, this brown, sort of black, slightly purplish stuff here. Uh, it's a metamorphic rock. All the stuff below this line, which I'm drawing here, is either metamorphic or some is igneous too. And this stuff here, uh, there's a, a number of different rock types, but they're all about the similar age and similar properties. And so they're very commonly called the Vishnu schist. This is a schist, a highly uh, foliated metamorphic rock. I'll show you some up-close examples here in a second. Um, intruded and sort of included with that schist, uh, here's an example of it here. This sort of pinkish stuff here uh, is an intruded uh, igneous rock, which has also been metamorphosed. Um, and there's a number of different uh, examples of this, but it's very often sort of lumped together and called the Zoroaster granite. So granite is an igneous rock. So the bulk of what we see down here, all of this stuff, is metamorphic. Schist uh, with some intrusions of granite too. So let's go take a look up close, look at its properties, uh, and then talk about how this stuff formed. So here we are down at the Colorado River. So here's the river, this green water here flowing to our left. Uh, this feature here, this is called the Silver Bridge for obvious reasons. There's one of two footbridges which cross the Colorado River uh, down at the bottom of the Grand Canyon within Grand Canyon National Park. And so looking across the river is a good example of this Vishnu schist, all of this dark stuff. Uh, and intruded into it is this pinkish stuff, the Zoroaster granite. So if you get really close, here's what it looks like here. This is the Vishnu schist, this black stuff. It's highly foliated. The mica minerals which make up this schist are very well aligned. Uh, and in most parts of the canyon, it's aligned nearly vertically. You can kind of see these, what looks kind of like layers to this rock. This is the foliation of the rock. And it's most places, it's nearly, nearly vertical or like here, uh, uh, really exactly vertically foliated. As we'll see, these minerals started out as flat lying. Uh, but thanks to how they got squeezed, they got both squeezed and turned on their side, so now that they're, they're standing up vertically. If we look even closer down here, um, this feature here is roughly the size of your fist. What we're looking at is the mica minerals within the Vishnu schist, this sort of black, black stuff here. You can see how it's been twisted and contorted. Uh, and this pink or white stuff here is the granitic intrusions, which intruded into the pre-existing uh, schist, and it in turn was metamorphosed and kind of contorted as these rocks were squeezed uh, and twisted. Another great place, a, a very similar type of rock of similar age. Um, this stuff, by the way, is about 1.7 billion years old. which is about one quarter or so of Earth's history. It's really quite old stuff. 
So this is at the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. Here's the Gunnison River flowing in this direction down at the bottom of the canyon. It's very similar. This is the, oops, excuse me, this is the schist, the dark colored rock, which is in turn has been intruded by granite. And both of them have been metamorphosed, more so the schist, uh, somewhat less so the granite. Um, here the granite is mostly white colored. Uh, in the Grand Canyon, it is more pink colored, but the process is the same. And the rock types are very similar. So let's go back to the Grand Canyon. This is a cross section looking at all the various rocks in the canyon. Um, so here's the Colorado River at the bottom. And so what we're looking at here below this line, this is the line between the metamorphic rocks which, and igneous rocks, the pink stuff, which is on the bottom of the canyon, and all of this on both sides of the canyon, which are the sedimentary rocks that we've seen before. So let's talk about what happened here to form these, these different rock types. So let's go back in time about 1.8 billion years ago. Uh, these images, these three uh, little diagrams at the top here, are from the Grand Canyon Geology Museum uh, at Yavapai Point in the Southlands. And so about 1.8 billion years ago, what we had going on here is here's North America, or what will eventually become what we call North America. Uh, and on the west coast of North America, there was a number of plates which were moving towards the east, towards North America, and subducting, uh, creating volcanoes here, which were very active and erupting a lot of ash and lava flows. And that material was deposited, at least some of it was deposited in that intervening ocean. And North America was being eroded by rivers, and some of that sediment was being deposited here. So there was a lot of accumulation of sediment and volcanic material in that area. But thanks to subduction and the movement of those islands towards the continent, all of this material here got heavily metamorphosed. It got squeezed, it got contorted. Those minerals were aligned and twisted uh, and deformed, sort of as what's being depicted here uh, in the middle image. Formed a massive mountain range, sometimes called the Vishnu Mountains. They're not there anymore, of course. Uh, but they have, may have been as big and impressive as the Himalayas are today. Eventually, this... Uh, sort of shortening, deformation, and metamorphism that was happening on the west coast of North America that waned, that turned off. This subduction, subducting plates on the, on the west coast uh, didn't subduct anymore. Conditions changed there. Uh, and then erosion turned on. And so the action of glaciers and rivers and wind flattened this area, scraped off the bulk of the top of these mountains, and produced this landscape. So here we have the metamorphic rocks on the bottom, uh, and a relatively flat surface, a flat landscape uh, which may have existed for a few hundred million years, uh, if not as much as 500 million years, a flat sort of empty landscape with these metamorphic rocks on the bottom. And so later, conditions changed, sea level rose quite a bit, uh, sea level went up and down in fact, and then the flat-lying sedimentary rocks which we see on top of the Grand Canyon formed on top of this area. So this is what we see now. This is an image standing uh, down near the bottom of the Grand Canyon. You can see the Colorado flowing here to our left. And this surface, the top of the flat metamorphic rocks and the bottom of these sedimentary rocks is this line. Here's the metamorphic rocks that are here. Uh, and on top of that here, you can sort of see the flat layering of the sedimentary rocks that lay on top. Okay, let's look in detail at the lab. What do you actually need to do? The, it's very similar to the sedimentary and igneous rocks lab. Uh, the first page is, is a sort of a review of the properties of igneous, uh, excuse me, of metamorphic rocks. Most importantly, how they form. So the first part is an explanation of how metamorphic rocks form. And what we're most interested in here is what happens to the minerals within a rock, which then forms a metamorphic rock. What happens to those minerals? So heat and pressure are an important ingredient, but we want to know the process. What does heat and pressure actually do to the minerals to make a new rock type? In the second part here, you're going to be looking at the two metamorphic rock textures. Again, remember, texture in geology never means how it feels to your hands. It doesn't mean rough or smooth. In terms of metamorphic rocks, there's only two choices. There's foliated or not. 
So what we want here is an explanation of what that means, uh, a small sketch of what a rock that is foliated, what the, especially what the minerals within it might look like, and another which is another sketch of a non-foliated rock, uh, and then a photo of, of one of your samples, one foliated rock and one non-metamorphic rock, so they can match up with your explanation in your sketch. Part two is to look at what is your uh, five metamorphic rocks. Um, so we're going to need your name. You can take that just from the, the, the chart that came with your rock kit. In the second column, the most important thing, I want you to identify the texture and how you know. Provide a very brief description of how you know that rock is foliated or non-foliated. What are the properties that you've observed that allow you to conclude that it's foliated or it's not? And then here include a photo of each of your samples. Part three is a little different. Here you're going to be going uh, and doing a little research, uh, finding uh, an example of, of any type of metamorphic rock, any specific rock, metamorphic rock you choose, uh, and a little discussion of it. I want to know what the processes are that cause the metamorphism, like what was happening in that spot where that rock formed to create the heat and pressure. I know heat and pressure is an important ingredient, but we want to know why was there excess heat? Why was there excess pressure? What was going on there uh, which created those conditions to make those rocks? Uh, if possible, it'd be nice to know what the protolith is, what the rock type that, that the Earth started with to make that metamorphic rock. Sometimes it's not possible, uh, but if you can, please mention it. Uh, I'd like a photo or a map of the place that you're talking about. I'd like a photo of the type of metamorphic rock you're talking about. Um, and definitely mention whatever references uh, you're using. You can choose any type of metamorphic rock that interests you. Um, the key is to identify a place where it actually exists on Earth uh, and figure out uh, what formed it uh, and why. Please type this up. It should be one page, double space. And here's a little bonus. If you can go outside and actually find this rock and talk about that spot, if you live near Tucson, there's a number of opportunities, a number of places where you can find uh, exposures of metamorphic rock. So if you actually write up your little report here on a place which you've been and you include a photo of yourself there, there's a little extra credit uh, incentive. All right, so that's the end. So you're going to need to uh, combine the lab document, the one I provided you here, uh, and your write-up into one PDF or Word file. Either way is fine. Uh, and then submit that to the Assignment 8 Dropbox. All right, let me know if you have any questions.